Hello, my name is Ed Nicholas, and I'm a multi-domain security architect with Cisco Systems. And in this session, you're gonna learn how to deploy cloud-native security using infrastructure as a code. So a little bit about myself. I've been with Cisco for about five years. Uh, previous to Cisco, I was at SunGuard Availability Services, where I managed the security architecture group. And previous to that, I was at Fiserv Technology Services, where I was a senior security architect. I primarily work in the U.S. East Coast area, and I had uh, specifics around security architecture, infrastructure, automation, orchestration, and APIs. So what are we trying to do here today? Well, the first thing we're looking at is how do we secure the new infrastructure? So the cloud native infrastructure, if that's in a public cloud such as AWS or Azure, or if it's in an on-prem cloud native orchestrator such as OpenShift, we need to really understand the constructs of how to secure this infrastructure. Um, we need to be able to provide infrastructure security as well as application security. In addition to that, we need to be able to rapidly integrate. So, our app developers are constantly updating their apps rapidly, maybe a few times a day, maybe a hundred times a day. But we need to be able to keep up with that. We really need to be able to secure these infrastructures, rapidly integrate our security applications with their business applications. And we can't do this with any downtime. So then days of like, you know, you made changes all week and then we're not gonna push security policy until Sunday morning then days are gone, right? We need to be better. We need to be faster, we need to be quicker, and we can't provide any downtime while we do so. The reason why we do this is to enable the business because the business, the application is really the business, right? So if we take it down or we're a bottleneck, then the business kind of suffers. So we need to be able to make sure that we rapidly integrate with no downtime and secure the infrastructure while the application serves the business. And finally, we just don't want to get fired, right? Because when we break the application, we break the business and then we get fired. And that stinks. So what are we going to build today? So today, our infrastructure as a code is going to be up in AWS. So we're going to deploy an AWS VPC. And in that VPC, we're going to have a whole bunch of subnets, an external subnet, internal subnet, management subnet. And then we're going to deploy two EC2 instances one EC2 instance for our secure firewall and another EC2 instance for our EKS Kubernetes cluster node. If you see over here to the right, we have a dev box. The dev box is where we uh, do all our dev stuff, right? So we have an AWS CLI so we can interact with the EKS node or the EKS API. We're primarily gonna use a lot of Terraform today because Terraform is super popular as an IAC tool we're going to use jenkins to configure our pipeline and run our pipeline and continuously integrate that security deployment as well as ansible so we utilize ansible for configuration management mostly of our firepower our next gen firewall configurations but then also there's also a couple other things that we can use ansible for and you'll see that as well we're going to deploy a couple applications on our EC2 uh, EKS worker node. We're going to deploy a Yelp app and we're going to deploy an, an Nginx app. We're also going to deploy a couple security applications, such as secure firewall, like we talked about in that EC2 instance. We're going to deploy secure workload so we can get um, visibility into the workloads in that EKS environment. And we're going to deploy secure cloud analytics as well. So let's jump into the demo. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our GitHub repository. And if you take a look here, um, we have a repository with all our code in there. The repository is called Cisco Cloud Native Security Workshop, and you will have access to this repo to clone and do what you will. But as you can see here, um, we have full-blown instructions on every little thing that I'm going to, we are going to deploy here today. So uh, you can read through this as, as this video goes off, or we can, you can do it whenever you want, but uh, this will give you step-by-step -step instructions on exactly what, what I'm deploying here today, and even more, actually. So let's go jump into the code. Um, 
So after you clone the code, um, you, you see here that we, we have the repo and then there's a couple of directories that we're going to be working in. We have a dev directory and we have a prod directory and these are exactly the same. So I'll start with the dev because we're going to deploy, deploy the dev first. And in the dev, uh, we have a whole bunch of files here, but I want to point out a couple. So we start with the main PDF file and this file here gives us all the Terraform providers that we're going to install. So we have AWS, we have Kubernetes, we have uh, kubectl that we're going to use here and, and some other data as well. Then we're going to go and we're going to take a look at our variables. So these variables are actually being assigned um, from Jenkins when we build the pipeline, uh, but we can use a TF vars file to also assign these variables as well. And any variable that's in here um, can be changed uh, in the TF bars or, or in the tickets file. And we'll go through that when I when I go through that. But if you take a look at the variables that we have, uh, you know, the AWS secret and, and access keys, um, FTD username and passwords, and then availability zones, subnets, IP addresses, cluster names, all that goodness. All right. Uh, the first main uh, VPC file that we have here is to deploy the VPC. So we create uh, a virtual private cloud. Um, we add all our management subnets in there. As you can see here, I have an outside inside. We create some security groups to access. Then we have our network interfaces. So we configure our interfaces and we attach the security groups. So we create an internet gateway, routing tables and uh, elastic IP addresses. So this will configure the VPC infrastructure. Next, we uh, will configure the Firepower Threat Defense virtual instance on our EC2. So what we're doing here is we're pulling down AWS uh, AMI for FTD. So I'm reaching out to the marketplace and we're pulling down the version that we want to deploy in the product code. So this will this will tell us what, what kind of AMI that we're going to deploy on top of that EC2 instance. We're going to create a template on it with the username and password, and we're going to attach the network interfaces to it. Next one here is this FTD host file. So since we're, you're going to use Ansible to deploy the FTD configuration, we need to build a host file with the variables that are configured in the VPC itself. So we need to get the IP address of the FTD host, the management IP address, so we can go out and reach out to the API and connect to it. We need the username and password associated with that host file as well. And we need some EKS information such as its inside and outside IP address. And talk about EKS, we have to deploy an EKS cluster um, to run our Kubernetes stack. And so we're gonna deploy a cluster here. We're gonna apply some security groups to it. And then we're also gonna deploy a worker node. And, and the worker node is gonna be deployed using uh, an auto scale configuration. So we're gonna use an auto scale configuration. I'm only gonna deploy one worker node in this demo, but you have the availability to deploy multiple worker nodes if you wanna scale it up or scale it down. We have a config map that allows that worker node to talk to the, uh, the master API. And then we have this cool thing called an Ansible deploy file. And really what I'm using this Ansible deploy file is to deploy my Ansible playbooks. So I'm creating a provisioner, uh, a local provisioner that's going to go out and run uh, a Docker image and run these playbooks inside that Docker image. So the first one that we're going to deploy is this FTD status. And this is just saying, hey, if the management IP address is, is available and it's up and I'm getting a response code of 200, that let's move forward because if it doesn't, it's just going to break. Then we do an initial um, provisioning where you know we sign the end user license agreement, we apply a license to it, in this case a demo license, and then um, we move over to the configuration. And then in the configuration, we're going to configure the FTV instance and the interfaces, all the network objects and NAT objects and uh, security zones and access control policies in here. So it's going to deploy all that. Next, we're going to get into the application. So after the infrastructure is deployed, we're gonna we're gonna go and deploy some applications. And some of the applications that we talked about was we're gonna deploy secure cloud analytics. We're gonna deploy we already deployed the secure firewall, and now we're gonna deploy uh, the secure 
of workload as well. So let's take a look, and we're also going to deploy some applications as well. So um, let's take a look at the analytics. We built uh, a manifest file here, so we can then deploy the daemon set inside our Kubernetes cluster. Um, we have uh, another file for the workload that's going to deploy our titration um, scopes and filters. And all this is going to be uh, configured initially, and then I'm going to go back and, and show you how, how it was configured on the UI. So, but here, really, what we're doing is we're creating um, scopes and filters and policies for secure workload um, to do micro segmentation within that cluster itself. And then we have a Yelp app that we're going to deploy. The Yelp app is is a cool three tier app um, that that we're going to deploy that will give us, you know, a web UI, an application server, a database server, and uh, and a caching server, you know, all within one namespace. Then we have our prod directory. So really the prod directory is exactly what the dev directory is, except that it has different variables. And um, as you can see here, it's the same exact thing, but we're gonna utilize different variables within our Jenkins file. And the Jenkins file is, is really the pipeline as code. Okay, so let's take a look at the pipeline file. So this is our Jenkins file, and the Jenkins file is is really the the, the pipeline as code. And what we're going to do is first we're going to configure all the environment variables um, that we need to pass over to uh, these variable files within within Terraform. Um, so the first thing that we have is the, the lab name, which is uh, CNS lab, and then we have a couple of different variables. So we have a lab ID for dev, and then we have a lab ID for prod. And you'll see why I'm doing this. Uh, that I have that the access key and secret key for AWS, and then I have the same for prod and dev for availability zones and regions and, and all that. So I'm setting these environment variables here. Uh, and I'm configuring them in Jenkins. Um, and I'm passing them to uh, basically our stages and steps. This way, uh, we can then do uh, a deployment of a dev environment and a prod environment, because really what we need is we need to test all this in the dev environment and, and automate it and make sure that we don't have any errors before we, we deploy the prod, obviously, right? So in this case, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're pulling down, we're checking out the repo uh, that we're working in right now. And, and then we're gonna do a uh, build dev infrastructure. So uh, essentially we're gonna run everything that's in this guy right here. So the infrastructure, and that's gonna go out and I'm gonna pass all the variables to it from here, okay, in this step. Then the next stage is I want to build all my, my Cisco security uh, cloud native stuff. So uh, that's going to deploy mostly everything in this directory right here. So uh, the secure cloud analytics, the workload, um, the apps, and utilize them variables and we pass them variables to that as well. I also have, uh, as you see here, a little uh, Docker run in here for uh, the FTD. And so if we were to make changes to the FTD configuration, we would add this in here, uh, but I'm skipping over it for now because it takes a little bit for Ansible to run that configuration. And then another stage here is to test it, right? So this is a very simple test. We're just doing an HTTP GET and we're expecting a response code back of uh, 200. So the idea here is anything that we deploy as infrastructure as code, if that's in secure workload or the secure firewall or anything else, that we'd be able to see if it broke our application. Because if it breaks our application, we get fired, right? So that, that's not good. So uh, after after this goes good, so if this fails, then then everything, then nothing gets pushed into production, right? So if it if it's good, then we're pretty sure that it's because it's the same exact code. Um, just in a different AWS region, um, that we should be able to get a, a successful deploy in the prod and a successful test. So we duplicate everything here, but as you can see, um, 
our variables are now pointing the prod. So these are all dev variables and these are all prod variables. Um, dev is being deployed to US East 2 and prod's getting deployed into the US East 1. Um, so then we, we deploy our applications as well, and then we, we test it uh, once again in Pride just to make sure it really didn't, didn't, didn't break anything. Let's go into the pipeline itself and let's, let's actually run it and see what happens. So I'm going to do a build, and I'll open this up in Blue Ocean because it's a much nicer interface. And as this runs, just come down here. And what, what we should see here is it running through the pipeline. So we checked out our code and we are good. And as you can see down here, we're running a Terraform apply. So we are able to build the dev infrastructure and the dev infrastructure is now good. So that went in okay. Now um, we're building the applications inside of that infrastructure so you can see terraform go out and do a deploy and then now we're going to deploy our infrastructure in production uh, you can also see that we test it we did a get to our new web, web application and we got a response code of 200 and, and everything looks good there then we do a deploy to prod infrastructure is the same exact configuration as we deployed in the dev except obviously some of the variables are different than in prod. Uh, we deploy our application so we're deploying the secure workload we're deploying uh, secure cloud analytics and we're deploying uh, the application itself and and then we're going to test it and make sure that everything works which is good. So we got a response now to the production. And, and that seems to be that seems to be good. So let's go in here and, and take a look at our instances. So here we are in uh, US East one. So we got production and production seems to be good. I have uh, a prod node here, which is our EKS node, our EKS worker. Then we have our FTD instance. Um, let's go down to EKS and we can make sure that everything is deployed into our Kubernetes cluster. So we have a Kubernetes cluster and we should have a worker node associated with that Kubernetes cluster, good. All right, um, and then let's go into the firepower. Make sure there's configuration there. So as you can see, uh, this is the prod firepower, FTD prod. And we got, we should have objects for Kubernetes clusters, we should have service ports for uh, Yelp and Nginx, and we should have policies as well. So we have inside outside policies with them applications defined, and we have NATs that are configured as well. So that's all good. Let's go into our secure cloud analytics. And what we did was we deployed the daemon set into secure cloud analytics. And we should have the IP addresses right here of our prod. This is actually our dev instance and uh, our prod instance. So what Secure Cloud Analytics gives us the ability to do is to get all the event information, all the analytics that's going on in the environment, as well as if we wanna get uh, any alerts or observables based off of what's going on in the environment. So this is giving us all the flows that are in there. It's gonna give us our cloud posture. So if anything's configured wrong. We also wanted to configure secure workload. And what that does is it allows us to, to apply a, 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 like a host, a hosted distributed firewall on our, it, on our nodes, right? So on the pods themselves, we now have the ability to go in here and you'll see that we've configured uh, a dev scope with Yelp in it and we configured a prod scope with Yelp in it. So these, these scopes were defined in, in the Terraform file for workload. And we also deployed a segmentation policy. So if you go up here 
I do switch applications. I have two apps, but as you can see here, I have one app that is in lab dev and one that is in lab prod. And if I go into the app, you were able to configure the policies that say, okay, anybody on the outside can talk to the web UI and the web UI can only talk to the, the app on this port. And then the app can only talk to the database on that port and the app can only talk to the caching server uh, on that port. So that provides us full segmentation inside of the Kubernetes cluster, inside the namespace for the pods themselves, which we did in pretty much a couple of minutes. Pretty cool. Okay, so what did we just find out here? So we learned out of provision infrastructure using Terraform. That was the main point. Most of our configuration infrastructure as code was from Terraform. We learned how to use configuration management using Ansible and Terraform. So we actually built provision using Terraform and uh, did configuration management using Ansible and did configuration management using Terraform. Um, all the configurations are stored in GitHub. So any change control, version control is all saved right there. So we don't have to worry about configuration backups, all that type of stuff. And then we ended the infrastructure with our CICD. So we use Jenkins to kind of do the deployment for us, do the, do the tests, do the builds, do the deploys, which is really where we wanted to go. And that's the main point of, of this session. And we didn't get fired. And that's the, that's the biggest point there. Um, here are some resources, the GitHub that we have. Um, the, the run through the workshop is at the top here, the Cloud, cloud Native Security Workshop. And here are some uh, Terraform uh, sites that you can go to that I use to build all this out and, and Ansible as well. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining.